Welcome to the first part of this project. As you can see, it's collecting reference. It might look like super boring, but it's super useful and I definitely recommend it. I, I wasn't doing this for quite a long time. I, I'm in the art industry for almost 10 years now. And only in the past two years, I believe I started doing this. And I feel it changed my workflow. My artwork has improved and now I can produce much better quality work because maybe it's like uh, the ideas that I'm uh, going for are further developed by looking at this reference and end up with a much better fleshed out concept. Um, you see me using uh, this software called Pure Ref. It might look like I'm dragging and dropping in Photoshop, but it's actually the, the window from Pure Ref. Uh, and it's like such a simple and useful software and I, I urge you to get it and uh, start uh, collecting your reference with it because it's very simple uh, and secondly it doesn't cost anything but if you if you like it and use it on a daily basis like like I do I recommend making a donation to the guy to show your appreciation and support um, supporting this uh, small creators around the industry might uh, take us a long way because we're going to only receive better and better tools. Okay, so let me explain you a bit about the shortcuts that you can use in PureRef. First of all, you can drag and drop from uh, web browsers. I'm using Firefox and I imagine it works exactly the same for uh, Chrome or Explorer. Um, another shortcut that you can use is um, control and uh, left click on an image and dragging and when you drag the image starts to rotate so that's kind of cool um, if you are with the cursor of the mouse over one picture you can uh, tap space and that will kind of zoom in on that picture and make it as big as the the pure ref window also, I believe uh, double click does the same thing. So if you double click on an image, it's gonna zoom in and you're gonna see that image uh, as big as the pure ref window. If you want to resize the images, uh, you have to hold Ctrl Alt and uh, then right click and drag over the images from left to right again. Just uh, try the shortcuts and uh, yeah, they might sound complicated for a bit, but they're simple and uh, you're gonna remember them as the most, the more you use them. Um, I use this application uh, because it has a feature called always on top. And uh, if you press Ctrl Shift and A, the the pure ref window will always be on top of your other windows so i don't have to worry where my reference board is it's, it's just going to be there on top of everything and you're going to see during the project as i draw and build the mech uh, it's going to be there for most of the times what else you can do oh yeah flipping images you can uh, Shift, Alt, and right click and drag uh, to flip the images. Shift, Alt, and right click and drag over the images with a click. And you, you're going to be able to flip them horizontally or vertically. It depends on the direction of the drag that you do with the mouse. I spent around maybe 30 minutes, one hour, looking for images for my project. Um, it goes on and on like this, so I'm not gonna bother you anymore with this. <laughs> I'm gonna just stop it here. Uh, maybe I'm gonna include the, the file in the download so you can see what I search for. Oh, actually here I finished. And this is where I start uh, sketching. This is the super rough sketch that I showed you in the beginning. Um, all I try to do here is, uh, besides setting up a time limit, like 20 minutes per sketch, 
I try to paint with big brushes and use like basic forms. I don't want uh, to go too much into detail. And with these simple rules, the time limit, the big brushes and the simple shapes and simple colors, I set up myself for a successful block out. After I uh, do kind of a silhouette sketch, I uh, start drawing on top with some uh, lines. Again, I try not to detail, even though like when you see me adding bolts and stuff like this, that's super small that I consider detailing and I shouldn't do that. That's for the last uh, stages of the design. But yeah, like I cannot focus very well sometimes. But keeping in mind this, uh, these tools uh, can uh, help you become more efficient. I think 30 minutes per sketch is more than generous at this stage. I don't think you need more than that. Of course, it depends what you're doing, but for like a biped uh, mech or something like that, it's more than enough. Some people might be able to do it like even with details in this amount of time, but I would be slow because I tend to change my mind quite a lot. As you can see, I uh, I added some blue dots. Those represent uh, the joints of the mech. So I imagined where they are positioned. I put them symmetrically in space and then I started building around those. Actually, I started building around the human, uh, human form. As you saw, I, I drew a tiny figure because uh, this project was... Uh, supposed to fit a human and it it would be wise if you add that person straight up my idea was to make this mech utilitarian and that means give him a, a function like carrying stuff so uh, that's why i i searched for forklifter trucks and uh, I just wanted to see the vocabulary of these uh, kind of tools, how they, they are. They're, they're pretty simple, but nothing beats real life re reference. I didn't end up going with this sketch because like, even though I kind of liked it more, I, I saw a lot of problems when it comes to movement, like uh, it wouldn't be able to twist from one side to another because of that big uh, shape. So I didn't want it to, to figure out this problem now because that's kind of a problem that you solve when you're kind of stuck with a certain design. I don't know, probably the 3D guys uh, that receive a concept know when they see something and it doesn't work, they have to solve it somehow and still make it look the same. And I pity them. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm like, I, I'm as a professional, I'm a 2D concept artist. So I'm sorry if I ever give stuff that kind of looks, ma makes sense, but it doesn't. Uh, I know that in the end, someone has to solve those problems. So anyway, um, I ended up not picking up uh, the first sketch. I went with the second one because I imagined uh, I can make it uh, twist much more easily from the hip area. But now that I look at this, uh, this could have been solved if we divided this kind of shield um, right here uh, and leave this uh, like maybe top part with a pivot that would be here. And uh, the top part will twist and the bottom part will stay always in place. Also this kind of detail uh, kind of suggested that this mech may be in a war zone. I'm sorry for that sound, it keeps on popping, I don't know why. So I didn't really want it to suggest that this mech is made for war. I just wanted uh, to, su to give the idea, the impression that it's used in a working field.
Here I'm following the same process as the first one. There's no much big difference. <laughs> because like, I, I couldn't see the whole picture ahead in, in my brain, but I kind of had a feel that I would like to do a mech that looks like this. Here I, I was exploring a bit more the with the shape of the the cockpit, I guess. I don't know what you would call this. And yeah, I, I think I can skip ahead a bit. Um, there's nothing much that's going to change. And uh, this sets us up for uh, the next step, which is blocking in Blender. All right. So I added a, an empty. And it's that, uh, that thing that looks like uh, just two axes, like, like here I throw the, the thing. And I'm going to use that to mirror all the objects. I created a box and then I added a modifier from this wrench called the mirror modifier. And then I chose that empty as a mirror point. So now whatever I'm adding and I'm applying that modifier to, it's going to mirror. And... Uh, I don't know if you're guessing what I'm doing here, but I'm starting with those uh, joints, placements. It's like, those are the most important parts of the mech. And uh, if we can give the illusion that uh, these parts work, uh, our design is gonna be a success, or at least in my opinion. Um, for this uh, mid part, I created a box with Shift A. If you press Shift A, you enter in that Create menu and you can create all kinds of geometry. Uh, but for this stage, it's important to, to just keep it simple, as simple as you can. Just boxes, cylinders, uh, what else? Cones or spheres. <laughs> the more you can do with these basic shapes, uh, the better it is. You see me cloning a lot here. So if you press, you, if you select an object and then you press shift D, you clone that object. So I'm just cloning around. See, I just did it there again. Now again for the, the sole of the, the foot. Here I entered in edit mode with tab. And when you enter in edit mode, you can uh, edit the individual um, sub objects. I believe they're called like vertex, edge, and face. So in order to edit those, you press tab. Um, I did a bit of extrusion there. If you press E, you extrude. Cloning again. One reason why I really like Blender, it's because it has this system where the let me try to put it right. You, you kind of can you can model without touching the gizmo. The gizmo is that those arrows. So you don't really need to touch those in order to move stuff, rotate or scale. It's more like you activate the shortcut and then your object starts to move. And you can constrain the the axis of the movement by uh, pressing the middle mouse button and uh, then you're going to see a dotted line and uh, if you orient that dot dotted line uh, with the z x or y axis that's going to be the the axis constraint it sounds complicated but it's really simple so i haven't seen this feature in any other software that i'm using but yeah i really love this it allows me to move super fast while I'm moving objects scaling them rotating them I'm I'm looking at the 2D sketch and it doesn't really look like the what I'm doing right now in 3D. 
but I was going to use that as a general idea anyway. I, I, I didn't think that this is the final concept. Again, I'm a, I'm a concept artist and I try to give the, the best I can. So as I, as I progress with my projects, I just try to, to improve. So in the end, like just the final image that I'm giving away, it's the one that has my seal of approval. The other ones are just a, a big ladder that takes me to the top, just stepping stones. I don't see them as useful in any way. Here I'm using the add-on uh, speed sculpt to create uh, basically a bar. Um, you can create this without the add-on too, but I recommend installing the, all the add-ons that you can for Blender. The way I did that bar is I pressed origin to create it at the 3D cursor and then I, I uh, pressed uh, add skin this button. And that will create this kind of bar. So this is basically a simple modifier trick. It's basically it's just lines with a, a skin modifier and a subsurf modifier. And when you extrude the a vertex, it's, it's just going to become a, an extension of that bar. So there's nothing fancy, but this add-on already does it for you. You don't need to set up the modifier separately. Uh, it's just there. I definitely recommend uh, learning about modifiers because they're going to open up new ways uh, of modeling for you. There's this guy, uh, I think his YouTube channel is called The Mantisa and his name is Mij Sinev. I hope I pronounce his name right. And all he does is uh, modeling with modifiers. He creates like super crazy organic stuff and the way he uses Blender to model, it's like a, a total alien thing. I think uh, I'm gonna make an extra video to, to show some shortcuts that I often use so you guys don't get lost. But yeah, here I was beveling, extruding. You can bevel by selecting an edge, then pressing Ctrl B. If you scroll up and down, you can add the segments to the bevel and it's gonna create a curve. And there I did it again, I, I was beveling. Here I'm using a bit of box cutter. Um, this is something that you shouldn't do in this stage, adding details, but again, like, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so little by little, the, the robot gets closer to the, to what we built in the 2D sketch. I'm not even sure if you should show this to a client, <laughs> they might freak out. <laughs> but for me, if this works at this stage, uh, the project is done. It's just like spending a lot of hours uh, and polishing everything up. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, that was a lot of work for <laughs> such a simple shape. Yeah, I still 
play with that shape like huh, you shouldn't do that <laughs> uh, here I added the mirror modifier but I moved the position so um, the bar gets welded at the top if you don't do that you're gonna not be able to make those skin uh, modifiers uh, seem that like they're touching in the middle And yeah, on the mirror modifier, uh, we had clipping uh, checked. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add uh, some uh, viewport colors for your uh, objects. Because when you see uh, the, the color break up, you get new ideas, you see the design basically with fresh new eyes. Again, adding the bars with the skin modifier. So basically if you add a cube and you add a skin modifier, you're gonna see a cube made out of wires. That's the whole point. Like every edge is going to be turned into a bar. I, I recommend uh, this stage to do it as fast as you can. Set a time limit. The block out should be always with time limits because it's super easy to go in details and that's not important right now. Just add everything and then we go further from there. That's why I will screenshot this stage and I'm gonna concept, concept on top of it in Photoshop because I think better when I, I draw uh, design wise. So I'm looking for my best ideas anyway in the paint over time. Okay, so here I, I'm adding materials. All you need to do is uh, make sure you have cyclist render, cycles render here selected. And then you select a, an object. Then you go on the material tab, click on the plus sign and then in the viewport color you choose whatever color you want you have to be in cyclists remember because uh, i'm going to use also another uh, plugin to render i'm going to use octane so for some reason in that uh, if you are in uh, in that plugin <laughs> it's not going to work and in order to not go for every material to do this to assign to each one you can select all the materials with shift clicking on them and uh, stay on the as the last material selected stay on the the one that has the material and then hit control L so control L and choose uh, link materials and also like that I'm uh, cloning the modifiers the mirror modifier like I only set it up once and then I I uh, select all the objects that I want to be mirrored then lastly I select the one that has the mirror modifier and uh, then I press ctrl L and uh, I choose copy modifiers here I'm creating the hand uh, blocking big shapes no big details Sometimes, like in order to select everything, I, I just press uh, Control L. I select something in uh, in, an, in, uh, in the object, like the edge of a cylinder. And then, if you press Control L, it's gonna select all linked uh, data. So you're gonna be able to to move everything. As you can see in this uh, concept, I, I was doing like some sort of weird rods on the. Uh, forearms but those are not gonna make it in the final because 
I was looking at them and I was like, do they make sense? It kind of looks clunky. Looks like it, it wouldn't work. So yeah, like I ended up ditching them. I'm gonna speed up a bit the video. There you go, the next part. And here I'm parenting. I'm doing this because, let me slow down and go back so you can clearly see what I'm doing. So maybe this is the, the speed that I'm modeling in, in real life, it's kind of slow. So I'm selecting each object that is supposed to rotate with a joint. And then I shift select lastly the joint and I press Ctrl P. And see now if I select that joint and only that joint and I start rotating, scaling or moving, the other objects start to move with that one. So it sounds complicated again, but it's not. Just select uh, everything that is supposed to move with something and then uh, shift click lastly the joint, parent it, parent all the, the geometry to that joint and then everything is going to move like that. So like this, we can preview how this uh, Mac is going to move. And uh, this is super important because you can make some really informed decisions on your design. Like you're going to see where meshes crash into each other and you can tell where you can need to cut stuff. So it's super cool. Okay, I'm going to speed up because that was the parenting thing. I'm going to show it again in the in the shortcuts video. So see all of a sudden we can move our Mac. What we cannot do right now because we have a lot of mirror modifiers is uh, not being able to rig the the middle part so we, the Mac can twist. But see here, I found a problem, like those, uh, those things, the wings, <laughs> the shoulder guards, uh, they, uh, they were positioned in a bad spot. Like if this mech would start to spin its uh, arms, it wouldn't work. And here, uh, they would have a problem, like again, spinning. So that's why I'm designing in, in order to function and this uh, simple rigging that I did helps me to see. Uh, I'm gonna skip this part ahead because it's not important. I was playing with some materials. Um, and here I was uh, maybe like thinking to to add some uh, glass and stuff like but it didn't make sense so I, I just removed it. So I'm gonna skip ahead to the next video. Alright, paint over time. So I took a screenshot and uh, put everything in Photoshop. All right, so this was the longest video that I've done. I don't know, I like to spend a lot of time when I'm, I'm drawing to, to explore ideas. And you see me using like a really low res image here. And I'm using that for a reason. Again, I don't want to go into details. It's super important not to go into details. Uh, details are so easy to add, but so hard to control. So that's it, is like, keep it simple as much as you can. Uh, I'm using the one pixel brush for multiple reasons. I love it, it's simple. <laughs> and uh, two, I cannot, uh, make it much lower res than this. So I only, when I paint with a brush that uh, is supposed to be used at different sizes, I end up uh, messing up the design because I just add a lot of line thickness that doesn't make sense. And uh, it's just bad. <laughs> like this, I, I can just focus on the design and nothing else. I'm gonna 
continue kind of detailing only one side of the Mac till it's done and then after I'm gonna um, draw on the other side the same thing here I changed the size of the brush because I started to think about that um, metal cage I also added the human I drew him up there because uh, I wanted to copy the proportion of that, the top guy again it's super important for um, our human figure to fit in there and uh, make it look like it's working <laughs> here uh, I think I painted on a wrong layer so I selected the, the colors and they just uh, erased actually I think I moved it on a different layer I didn't like the, the look of the round uh, headlights so I switched them to a rectangle shape I just want to check if this thing is recording yeah because <laughs> I've been doing some recording and I forgot to hit record um, here and there you're gonna start seeing some key elements that I'm gonna use uh, overall the the design like this shape here uh, that looks like just a triangle with a hole in it uh, I'm gonna make a kit bash element I'm gonna repeat it on top of the design a few times in 3d so everything uh, looks made by the same uh, designer I'm used to make this uh, mistake of uh, kind of giving nice details but different details and in the end the overall thing uh, doesn't look like it was made by a single person but, but by like a team of idiot engineers that didn't talk to each other and uh, it's so much nicer when you achieve a, a, a uni unitary design unitary I don't know if that's a word And in this stage, uh, it's the the basic block out that we did in 3D helps so much. I'm gonna do so much with this block out that I wouldn't have done in uh, straight up in 2D because you have to think at all the elements, how they look in perspective, and it's complicated. But I think everyone can learn uh, a 3D software of choice in order to do block outs and then use them as a base for their uh, projects And here I'm just trying to draw as, be as best as I can in, pers in the new perspective that I have. <laughs> as you saw when I drew the initial sketch, the, the first one, uh, it, was, it was a bit more, um, how do you say, like flat in perspective. Because I didn't want to mess up with a weird angle. And so I, I'm just picking my battles here is like, the easiest thing that I can do, I take it because no one is going to see this in the end. And also, initially, just a secret, uh, this was supposed to be a 2D um, design. <laughs> I didn't plan to make it in 3D. I just wanted to make a, a tutorial on how I concept stuff these days. So I wanted to to actually show how I work at work and not how I did it on Twitch. On Twitch I just did the 2D stuff, 
but it was more like fantasy stuff, which I don't do that much at work. In the past two years, I've been doing mostly mechanical designs. So this is my workflow that I use on a daily basis. I think it's safe to skip ahead a bit. Let's see if I get new ideas what to talk about. See, with time, I, I start to add uh, more and more details. And like I said, this uh, was the video that I I didn't stop for a long time. I just kept on recording. So I recorded for like two hours and I, I, I did this drawing. But this was because I wanted to add some uh, details in order to know what to do next, you know, what to, I, I, I could go back to pure ref and look for more reference for how these cables could look like or stuff like that. So I wanted to give the illusion of detail, even though these details are quite simple. Um, I got these soldiers from uh, this 3D scan store. Um, I think it's called 3D scan store. They do the anatomy 360 packs and uh, they're very cool. So they had a sale and um, I, I bought a pack of 80 models, which I never used because uh, they come out with without textures, but I, I really wanted to to use them at at least once. So this is <laughs> where I got one of those and I put 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 him in the scene so I have it there. But it's not going to be in the final render. Uh, it's it's just there for scale. Here I'm thinking more about the utility of the back thing. I was thinking hooks and stuff uh could be helpful in order to anchor the the stuff that this mech is going to carry. Here I'm trying to design the, the the claw or whatever the heck I was thinking back then. <laughs> kind of looks like shit. Like the hands uh, suffered the more the most change out of the entire mech because they didn't really make sense. I was I was trying to give them sense, but I don't know. I feel like I'm more comfortable designing directly in 3D anyway when it comes to to do something functional. Because 2D can be so deceiving, like sometimes, like this cabin, like as I drew it, make total sense to me. But when I started modeling, it's like, this cannot fit, like, or this cannot twist anymore. It's going to crash into this or that. So I just uh, use this drawing as another stepping stone for the final design. Probably a good 3D modeler a better 3D modeler than I am could have achieved like uh, the exact same uh, result. But here I wasn't really happy with the entire proportions and stuff. So I just stopped when, uh, whenever it felt decent enough for the next stage. I'm almost done with this half of the mech, so soon I'm going to start moving the everything on the other side. Uh, on the shoulder, I, I thought I'm going to add some uh, cloth in Marvelous Designer, but I didn't figure out how to do that. <laughs> I still plan to learn that software. I have it for a lot of years now, and I still uh, don't use it. I, it's money well spent. <laughs> Here I'm making a silhouette. Um, I don't remember the reason why I decided to make the silhouette now. Probably I wanted to turn off the, um, the back sketch. Or I wanted to see the negative shapes better. Probably that was it. <laughs> Because you have all these negative shapes that change the, the silhouette look. So, and uh, when you just do 2D, you cannot really see unless uh, they have a, a value. So I just selected out and removed. Yeah, see. 
so now I see the design with fresh new eyes and uh, I'm going to be able to continue it better, I think. So without boring you too much, I'm going to skip ahead. Let's see. I don't know how about you guys, but I hate drawing ellipses by hand. They're they're so annoying, but they're so pretty when they look nice. <laughs> Here the design was done, and um, I started to add uh, some values just two values at the moment but then i'm gonna add a bit of color too my layers were a mess <laughs> here and i put the the line art to multiply because it wasn't done with black so it wouldn't it didn't stand out and also when I uh, make a selection with uh, a base color, I don't try to nail the color with a brush. I just press uh, Ctrl U and I uh, play the, with the hue and saturation and the colorize and uh, till I achieve a color that I like. Here I'm adding some uh, shadows with a multiply layer. With, I kept I picked up a, a light blue as a color and uh, I just paint wherever I think it's going to be in shadow wherever is a hole so so I would see the concept with different eyes again Here I was trying to name this mech Armstrong, but <laughs> I realized it's like, uh, I cannot fit that whole word in there. So I gave up on that. Uh, this is like uh, an idea that I can see I had in the initial sketch and then I, I forgot about it. The, the lines, like I just added them in the final render in Photoshop. But I forgot I did those. I kind of didn't use uh, this sketch till the final product. So here it's time to change the the 3D block out and uh, I'm gonna try to solve some problems. I figured out this mech cannot twist because of that back thing. Uh, I mean twist from the hips it wouldn't be able to rotate because it would crash into its legs so I changed the position and now I'm uh, using the same bar technique with the skin modifier to add the, the cage for the, the dude and as you can see here like the more stuff you have in the scene um, it kind of steals your attention I, I wish there would be a way to kind of see the whole project to have a a general view of the project and still being able to isolate stuff I mean yeah you can isolate elements and work them separately but you, you cannot see how they fit uh, but because of that what I'm trying to say is that uh, I'm um, I'm kind of moving much slower than in the initial blockout stage where I was just adding stuff, adding stuff. But I guess that's just uh, the way it works. Um, when you have to do careful things, you have to be careful and slow down and think about it. 
Uh, so I just told you that I bought a pack of 80 humans, 3D scanned, that looks super nice. So I, And uh, you saw me there building a human from uh, that skin modifier technique. That's just stupid. Just use the human. <laughs> like, I wish I could beat myself in the back. That sounded so wrong. I wish uh, I, I could go back in time and uh, not beat myself. Because that sounds so also bad, but anyway, you know what I mean. It's just like use like if you if you buy uh, some assets, use them. Don't let them stay on our hard drive forever. And it happens to me that I buy uh, like kid bash stuff or photo photo bashing uh, references, and they just sit there. Here I'm, uh, I'm kind of box modeling. I'm trying to close the holes around the around the cockpit. I uh, I just extrude on and on uh, edges. You can uh, make these edges uh, thick later, but right now I'm just trying to make everything. Uh, sealed because I, that's how i imagine this cabin would be like it wouldn't have holes through it so the guy can fall could fall through to the holes so <laughs> and um, just having that uh, human figure shape like there kind of gives me an I ideas of or gives me indications if this person could see or not in this uh, cockpit. So the design decisions that I'm doing right now are informed by, by the human. I don't know what I did wrong there. I'm trying to do Boolean operations. This, this is a big part of my workflow, just cutting stuff. Here I'm using box cutter, shout out to Master Sian 1001 and to all the developers that work on box cutter it's amazing um i use it poorly <laughs> but later on i'm gonna use it properly i don't know what what i was doing here and why i was like missing so much the actions um but yeah box cutter is just like for cutting stuff it, it does what it says i i use it it's one of the add-ons that i use it on a daily basis box cutter hard ops uh, mesh machine and uh, lately, um, open VDB remesher. That add-on is super cool. I mean, all of those. It's like they made Blender, like I don't know. Imagine, uh, imagine like a shitty car. Um, I don't know the the car from PUBG. I know it's a Romanian brand. It's a Dacia. So imagine that and imagine a Lamborghini. So Blender without those tools is like a Dacia and then uh, with those tools is like a Lamborghini. Uh, so here I separated the, the mesh, I cloned it over with Shift D and um, I tested out the, the movement to see if uh, it could spin in the middle. adding some hip parts. I see I, I spin, so this is open VDB remesher. Um, I just cloned all the geometry. I joined it with Ctrl J into a single object. And then uh, I made it high res and now I, I just like put it in, in, phot in uh, not Photoshop, in ZBrush and I started the uh, <laughs> Dragging is like liquefying in uh, how do you call it in uh, Photoshop. Um, so I don't really care here if I'm destroying the mesh, and it's it's a pretty boring uh, process because I'm not a good uh, ZBrush artist. I ch I just know tricks in there. 
I wouldn't recommend them, but here I'm using a move brush with AccuCurve on in order to drag kind of corners. Man, this sound is super annoying. I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> so yeah, there's nothing much to say. I'm just using move brush in order to liquefy the mesh and uh, check out different proportions. That's it. And in the end, uh, I'm actually gonna skip ahead because it's like super cringy to watch. And in the end, uh, when I'm happy with the new proportions, I'm gonna go back to Blender. So see, this is kind of how it looks now. There I crashed the mesh, it's like, I didn't give a shit here. It's just like playtime. I kind of ended up with this uh, big shoulders and I like that. And I'm gonna update the Uh, the the low poly mesh in uh, in Blender. So see, it, it looks more manly now <laughs> somehow. This one looks super skinny. And uh, yeah, I'm just like dragging a few vertices, and I'm trying to get closer to that. And uh, all of a sudden, the the block out looks way different and much better. I was testing if uh, the, the things could still move. Uh, I didn't delete the other mesh. I just uh, I just moved this on a different layer. So see these dots here at the bottom are layers, and uh, if you select something and you press M. Uh, wait a minute. I think this video is like not in the right part. I need to go in the. Yeah, I think this video was supposed to be here. So I was saying about the layers, if you select a mesh and then uh, you move, you press M, you can move it on a different layer so you can organize your scene. So now here I decided to start modeling one part and make it high res and kind of make it a benchmark for the whole project. I didn't, I don't really like now this uh, shoulder part, but it's hidden behind the big, uh, shoulder cover so I don't really care about it doesn't keep me from sleeping well at night <laughs> but yeah I just try to to achieve to, to make a piece final so I, I would have a, a target of quality for the rest of my project And the process is the same as when we're blocking out shapes. Here I'm basically blocking out, but with smaller stuff. I'm adding uh, more cylinders, more cubes, and I'm just moving them around and make them look like they're not cubes and cylinders by adding like minimal modeling to them. Here I'm using box cutter to do some cuts. I should slow down a bit the video because it's kind of jittery. Um, that circle with the dotted thing, it's called the cursor. And by default, uh, if you don't change the shortcuts in Blender, you, you set it up with the left click. I recommend uh, to do a Google search, how to change it on uh, left click, oh, on right click instead, like invert the shortcuts somehow, because um, I don't know, it's just like a, I didn't get used to it. <laughs> and I know a lot of people didn't get used to it. So that's one of the first thing that I, I did in Blender. I tried to model 
with selecting with right click and uh, putting the cursor with the left, but I don't know, it just confused me when I went back to other applications where, I mean, to all the other applications that have a left click as select. Um, so yeah, that's the called the 3D cursor. And um, if you want to add, when you add an object with uh, the shift A menu, um, you just uh, put the cursor somewhere and if you add a cube or something, it's gonna be generated at the cursor origin point. So that's super useful because you can set that cursor wherever you want. If you click uh, on the surface of a geometry, it's gonna be stuck over that surface. Yeah, <laughs> it's not useless as I thought when I opened Blender for the first time a few years ago. It can be a powerful tool. Also, you can rotate around it. It can do quite a lot of tricks. Also, you can see I started modeling some uh, kit bash parts. Those are elements that I'm going to clone over and over on the entire surface of the mech. So it looks designed uh, by the same person. <laughs> And if you can do this with your projects, like uh, just a few elements that you echo around the design, uh, it creates more, more uh, unity in the visual aspect of your design. Here I'm using a box cutter with the gray box. The gray box appears when you don't have selected anything and you just start uh, drawing the shapes. And that generates uh, basically what you, whatever you draw. It generates as a mesh and then uh, you can use it as, as, as you wish. I use it as to boolean out from that big shape. There I was trying to steal more elements for the visual unity. <laughs> but I don't think I ever use them ever. <laughs> and here I was testing uh, the OpenVDB remesher add-on. I tried to make everything into a single mesh. I don't know why I did that because um, when you make, when you remesh something, it will become like uh, high res. So now I, I believe this object has 2 million polygons. And if you do this from the beginning, you're gonna end up with super uh, dense geometry. But here I was kind of learning the tool because it's a new add-on that I never used before. So it kind of bugged me down that I had those lower cylinders, so I I saw a video from a guy, I don't know his name, but I, I truly thank him <laughs> for making that video. Basically he, um, he set uh, the, the edges that are supposed to be sharp, marked them as sharp, and you can easily do that with the hard ops thing. It kind of knows what where the sharp edges are based on algorithms and angles and stuff. And then uh, you can select one of those sharp edges and uh, press shift, let me think about it. I think it's shift E or shift G. And one of those two has a select all, uh, it's, I think it's called select by trait and uh, you want to select uh, similar uh, edges that have sharpness. So if you select them all by sharpness, then you can press um, shift E and drag your mouse to the right and then you're gonna crease. And then if you apply a subsurface modifier, it's gonna work a bit better and then you can uh, 
uh, this part is super confusing. I'm gonna re-explain it in the in a separate video when I uh, <laughs> when I show the shortcuts. Okay, so. Here in the, the left, I'm using this add-on called batch uh, operations. And you can isolate by materials, by modifiers. And it's pretty cool because like this, I could, if, I, if you click on the mirror modifier and the, on the eye, you can hide basically half of the objects because almost all the objects in the scene have a mirror modifier, so they would appear twice. And uh, sometimes it's annoying uh, when you design and you see stuff that you don't want to see around. And that's how I kept things simple. So here I, I've decided to move on on the lower forearm. Lower forearm? I, I just the forearm. <laughs> And uh, the idea was here to make a structure frame with uh, some connector parts for the attachments uh, that the mech could use. But that idea kind of faded away over time because like, I did this project uh, in my winter vacation and the time was quite short. Um, so I decided to make, like, um, hol make it a bit hollow because uh, I imagine the the engines are in the arm part. It would make sense to have a, a lower weight for the the forearm. Here you see me use that technique where I uh, C sharpen it and then I uh, s select the sharp edges and uh, crease them and apply a subsurf modifier. Oh, actually, I think uh, it uh, Blender crashed on me there. So, yeah, there you go. So now the cylinder uh, doesn't seem low res anymore because. I'm doing that because when I'm going to make it high res, uh, that's going to bite me in the ass if the cylinder is low res. You're going to see basically uh, the edges, but in high res, and it's, there's no easy way to make them uh, round anymore. Some box cutter action here. And as you can see, I always try to reuse uh, elements. I just, instead of creating something new, I, I copy paste stuff. I'm also testing the movement of the, the forearm, if it still works. Here I'm beveling with Ctrl B. There I deleted uh, with unchamfer. Uh, it's uh, a part of the mesh machine add-on. So if you want to get rid of some bevels, you just use that. Here I'm exploring, adding a bit more shapes. And as I add uh, more geometry, I just parent it. Here I use the unfuck tool from uh, the mesh machine add-on to make the, the um, how do you call those chamfers? I forgot, <laughs> uh, flow better. 
um, and in the end I applied the C sharp and over so it kind of gives a softer feel the whole mesh I'm cloning that uh, hook base thingy on top of the forearm and uh, did I tell you how you can uh, uh, well, I might repeat myself. So if you want to snap elements on top of each other, you have to activate the snapping tool with the shift tab. Uh, and that's the equivalent of pressing this uh, magnet button down here in the middle where my mouse is right now. And uh, if you press control shift tab, you can choose uh, how the things will snap. So I, I choose on the face so when you move an object uh, it's gonna have its uh, origin uh, be placed uh, on top of the other object so it's kind of cool um also a design uh, tip that I could can give you is to clone your uh, meshes and uh, rearrange them so they, they're more uh, straight. <laughs> so when you create a new, new geometry and uh, you work with it, the, the alignment is not that off. Here I applied some uh, boolean box to make a nicer cut for that uh, part down there. But I think Blender is going to crash on me again and then I, I'm just going to cut everything uh, in a different way because I don't remember having this uh, kind of detail in the end. There were a few meshes uh, that were crashing my Blender file but I don't know why. Okay, so this video is, uh, <laughs> I messed up somewhere, like I organized them in the wrong position. Uh, now you're gonna see me work on this uh, yellow uh, protective case. I keep it very low res and I use a knife tool. The shortcut is K. So you have to be in edit mode. In order to be in edit mode, you have to press tab. tab and uh, then if you press K, you can just draw on your object and uh, cut lines. Uh, as you can see, I don't know how to model with just quads, so I just create shitty geometry and uh, I make it work somehow in the end. My philosophy is like kind of, if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be smart about it sometimes, but yeah, like I, I never learned how to model properly. Uh, then here I, I'm beveling and this scrolling the mouse wheel up while I, I press Ctrl B so it creates more uh, segments. And you can see here uh, I had some errors and you can uh, fix that with the unfuck tool from Mesh Machine. I cannot explain uh, how Mesh Machine works in a single video. You have to watch the the actual See, here I had a crash or something like that. Um, you have to watch the video documentation. It took me kind of, of a day to fully understand it. And even now I'm not sure I understood it like properly. But yeah, like it's hard, but once you understand how to use those tools, it's pretty cool what you can do with them. Here I try something else, uh, and here I remember for sure it's gonna crash on me. Or I undo, oh, I, un I, un I undid. 
Here I apply the solidify modifier uh, that you can quickly access uh, with the hardops plugin. Just buy hardops and box cutter. It's like they're essentials, I'm telling you. It's gonna make your blender into a Lamborghini. They're gonna be so fast. Well, I'm not as fast as uh, Jerry when it comes to using it. And I'm not as efficient, but I, I really love the tools. So again, uh, shift tab to activate snapping and then control shift tab to activate face. And now I'm just shift D and it's automatically snapping on top of the existing geometry, the kit bash elements. And I have a, a pro tip if you want to call it that. Uh, if you know you're going to clone a lot, uh, one of those hooks or whatever, just apply uh, on the first one the mirror. Uh, so you won't need to reselect them all and then uh, go back and link a mirror modifier on them. Again, I'm going to skip this part because it's not going to happen. But uh, I can talk about something useful here, actually. So here we want this to bend. So I bend this and as you can see, it crashes into the top part. So now we need to make a design choice. Uh, basically, we need to cut something. So I made a single vertex and I extruded it and I kind of drafted my line here. And then I'm going to use uh, the knife project tool in order to project this line on the on this geometry. So basically how the knife project tool works, you make your cutting geometry, uh, you select that, then you select the other object, and uh, while, selected, while having this uh, big object selected, you press tab to enter in edit mode, and then you're gonna have knife, knife project activated here. And uh, that's how it's going to work. It's going to make a cut. Or you can go just in edit mode in the big object or whatever. And uh, you can uh, use the knife tool. But with knife project, you can do some crazy stuff. It's definitely useful. So even though I removed this uh, yellow button piece, uh, I made it work with the top part too. I don't know if I should have kept that or but whatever now. Here I'm uh, building a piece for the inside so it doesn't look that empty. Yet I'm, I don't think I'm gonna detail in the end at all because it's hidden, no one sees it, so. It's just there to suggest some more detail. I apply a C sharpen on it and I give it a fat bevel and <laughs> it looks like, okay, looks like it has some detail. Here I was trying to make a frame uh, for this tool, but again, I'm going to skip forward because I know they're not going to be in part of the thing. so. If you guys have any questions about these videos that are missing, just tell me the, the name of the file and uh, where it happens and I'm going to explain to you in private what's happening. Uh, here I added uh, a ball to suggest uh, uh, like a joint in there and uh, then I moved the origin point of the hand uh, piece here so it spins there like properly I don't know I use C sharpen on everything because I, I like things to have a tiny bevel at least
still trying to fix that piece, but it doesn't really make sense. Okay, so once uh, the arm is done, I'm just gonna delete the previous geometry and now I'm gonna put this back in place, so. Actually, I'm not sure that I deleted the previous geometry. It's just like I, uh, maybe I moved it on a separate layer. Usually I don't delete stuff unless it's necessary. And there you saw Blender moving kind of sluggish and that's because on this uh, shoulder uh, black part, I had like two million polygons and that was the mistake that I told you about. I remeshed it, I made it high res, but there was no point in uh, committing to the high res just yet. So the longer you can wait, the better. So now I remove those, uh, those things that I didn't like in design and I, I feel so much better already. Here I'm using uh, the, the cable te technique, I like to call it. Uh, but basically I, I'm using the, that uh, skin modifier with subsurf and the uh, overtis that you keep on extruding in order to generate these kind of cables. And uh, the way I, I resize that one, you select the vertices that you want to resize and you hold Ctrl and A and you drag your mouse to, from left to right. And then uh, it changes the width of the, the portion that's selected. So that's how I have two cables here. And also you can create a vertex and start a new cable, but some if it's not a root, it's not gonna show up as a cable. So with the cloned vertex, make sure you have a active, uh, Make sure you click on uh, mark root and that's when your new cable is going to start. So it's pretty easy. And another trick I used, I select all the vertices and then uh, here in the left, um, let me go back so I can show you. Uh, one second. I just need to see that menu. So here you have the loop tools. Uh, and you have relax and space. So first of all, I create the cable super low res. I just position it in, in place. And then I bevel, I select all the vertices with A. Then I bevel them with Control Shift B. If you want to bevel vertices, you have to use Control Shift B. Control B doesn't work on vertices. And that gives me more points. And uh, then I select them all again and I press space from loop tools, you have to activate this add-on in the Blender interface, if because you might not have it activated. And then relax. So what this does is uh, evenly spaces all the vertices and then uh, makes them smooth. So the cable doesn't look uh, low res anymore. And through low res, I mean just with corners and stuff, because this, uh, if we commit to this geometry, is gonna be pretty high res. Okay, cool. So here it appears I started to work on the ties. I just clone this yellow part and make it uh, black because I want to have a, an under structure and a, a yellow cover on it too. So there's no point into remodeling this piece. So there I deactivated the mirror modifier because I wanted to see what I'm doing on this single piece. And uh, if you plan to use the, how do you call it, the open VDB remesher um, to make your pieces high res, make sure you add from the beginning the cylinders with a lot of uh, uh, sides. So because it's, it's kind of a waste of time to just go around and um, and apply the subsurf creasing and stuff like that to make it high res, to make it more less faceted, I mean. And here I'm using the, the gray box in order to generate these meshes. You can go 
in a million ways of when you want to create stuff like this. So I could have used a single vertex and start to draw like I'm gonna do on the foot part. You're gonna see. But yeah, I'm I'm exploring different ways. And here, this is the help menu of the box cutter. It's usually hidden, but if you it's like you can click on it and then see it. It tells you what buttons to press. So it's pretty useful. In 2.8, uh, they kind of changed the shortcuts because the whole program it's different now. It's like I tried to use 2.8 and I, I was like, what the fuck? This doesn't look like Blender anymore. Uh, almost all the shortcuts are changed and the elements, but I I don't know. Like it has some really cool parts, so I'm definitely gonna experiment some more into in 2.8, and I'm gonna try to migrate. But for this tutorial, I wanted to do what I know. Okay, what I'm doing here. I think I'm gonna select this yellow part and I'm gonna delete a few faces. Oh no, here, it, I remember Blender was freaking out on me. Like, I don't know why, uh, it kept on changing the layer. Maybe I had a key stuck or something. I kind of regretting not deleting this uh, lower edge. I don't really like it. Instead, I've beveled it and I kept it like that. But I don't know if it's that visible in the end. So here, I'm gonna re uh, open VDB, remesh this thing so it's lower as. See now I made it 100 verts and 100,000 uh, faces or verts. No. Here's the face, it's 13,000, but it's too low res. So if you want to make it more high res, you have to go lower in this voxel size. And uh, when I say go lower, it's just like one unit from, if it's 0 0.003, go to 0 0.002 or something. And yeah, you can do that. As long as you don't click on, an, on another mesh, you can keep changing that and wait for the result. It's gonna take sometimes a bit of time, but yeah, you're gonna get new uh, a new geometry that kind of looks the same and uh, the mesh is much lighter. So here, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just moving parts around. I'm gonna speed up a bit in the video. Oh yeah, uh, I had some problems with my mouse. It wasn't recognizing my uh, commands. And uh, as you saw, I, ha I have a Razer Naga mouse. And why I have that is because it has like 20 extra buttons that you can put shortcuts on. So most of my shortcuts are in there and I I only touch the keyboard if I need to write something or yeah, like numbers basically. But shortcut wise, I'm I'm pretty well organized. Okay, so here uh, I use the box cutter to generate this mesh. Um, as you can remember, if you don't have anything selected and you use box cutter, it's gonna draw your meshes basically. And then I uh, 
voxelized it with OpenVDB remesher. And now I'm using like uh, the 3D code workflow where you just cut stuff. And um, why uh, OpenVDB remesher is super cool is because you can bend things with a lattice modifier. And I, I think I'm going to do that in just a second. Uh, as you can see, box cutter works also with high res meshes. So here I added the lattice, uh, is that box, shift A, add lattice. And then, uh, let me pause here. Uh, you have to apply on your object, you have to select your object, go to the modifiers and select the lattice. Then uh, you have to pick your object, see here, like uh, now I'm on this object, then you take this color picker and you pick the lattice and now it's going to tell Blender, okay, I want uh, you to listen to this box when it comes to this object. And uh, then if you go on the lattice and on these dots here that represent the lattice and UVW represent the resolution. So you can uh, see modify with the cage, the high res geometry. And that's pretty cool. Also, when you scale your lattice, don't press tab to enter into edit mode. Uh, just scale it uh, outside of edit mode. Because if you start moving uh, like points in the lattice, uh, scaling and stuff, then when you're going to apply on your object, Blender is going to think that you want those points moved as you move them. So it doesn't work that way. Just create the lattice and uh, scale it. Okay, so I think the yellow color was bothering me. <laughs> I changed it a bit. Now I uh, add a box and I make a connection with the actual knee. And because that box is colliding, I'm gonna use the knife tool or something like that in order to cut. There you go. And the more you do this, the better it is for your design because it uh, shows this unity that I keep on telling about. Uh, I'm trying to say the same thing, but different, so I sound smarter. But yeah, there's nothing much to say. It's like If you make the, the shapes uh, talk to each other, it's super nice. And people can tell. Like when you look at an object, if you see screws, you basically understand that uh, if you use a screwdriver, gonna, you can open that hatch or something, you know? and these things talk to your brain without talking, you know. Here I was trying to be lazy and uh, just move that there, but no. I'm just gonna do this instead. In the concept, I had some ridges uh, inside of the shape, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm making this part. Uh, I'm Shift D to clone it, and then uh, if you press P, you're gonna open the separate menu, so you can separate these parts if you want. Anything that is selected uh, and you press P in object mode, it's gonna get that menu for separation. So if you want to separate, do that. And I separated them so I can cut them at an angle like that. And then I'm going to join them back and I'm going to use the open VDB remesh. And by the way, that's a paid add-on. Like box cutter and the uh, hard ops. But I think it's pretty good. Like. You only spend this money once compared to other softwares like Max and Maya that cost like hundreds of dollars per month. So here you spend this 100 bucks, let's say, for all of them once and then you have them for your life and Blender is free. 
and these guys work really really hard and they update the stuff like every month and it's like it's just crazy okay now we're moving on back to I mean not back but on the top of the mech on the wings not the wings the shoulder protections I guess you saw me using a box cutter to cut a hole through that uh, once you have box cutter active and that the shortcut to activate box cutter is alt and w if you press d you can choose uh, with what shape you're cutting so there are three shapes in 2.69 and below uh, you have box uh, circle and uh, end gun okay here i'm uh, adding this uh, light motif elements that I'm gonna end up adding everywhere on the mesh. Um, here I made this high res again. I don't know why, there, it wasn't the time <laughs> to do that, but I don't know, I, w I just got excited with the add-on. It's better if you keep your stuff uh, low res for more time and just do that as a last pass, the high res stuff. So now you could uh, just export this uh, wing shoulder cover thingy in uh, ZBrush and just sculpt on it if you want to sculpt some damage, for example. And I'm pretty sure there is a ZBrush bridge that allows you to shoot uh, geometry from Blender to ZBrush with one click. Uh, I haven't installed it because, again, this workflow is new to me too. Um, but yeah, like I hate creating new geometry in, in ZBrush because it takes so much more time than uh, creating uh, boxes and c cylinders here and then organizing them and then just send that to ZBrush. There are people that are crazy good with uh, with hard surface in ZBrush, but I see no point in trying to do things uh, in the slow way. And even me here, I'm not doing the best choices probably. Like I said, this cylinder could have been uh, already with 200 uh, sides and uh, I wouldn't have to apply a subsurface modifier and crease the edges and stuff like that. So I think you can already tell that uh, the make it start to look much nicer than the beginning. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a lot of time that you have to to invest. But if the base geometry is shit, then yeah, that's where you have problems. So that's why I'm stressing so much to do that stage as well as you can do because after that the more time you spend the better it's gonna get usually all right this part is kind of boring i think I'm, I'm just avoiding to work on actual stuff here so i'm gonna skip a bit ahead okay um here i uh decided to work on the calf part is it no it's kind of the shin of the mech so i cloned that element i beveled some edges then i created a, a cube that i beveled again here's the thing if your bevel doesn't look right you need to apply a scale and rotation um, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. If you scale an object uh, in a one dimension and you didn't apply the scale, the yeah, the scale, then uh, some things will start to look wonky. Like when you will try to bevel, the bevel won't be round and nice. It's gonna be stretched. Depends on your how you scaled it before. So in order to apply scale. Uh, you just need to press Ctrl and A on the object and then choose Apply Scale or Rotation or whatever you need.
here I created the shape in order to cut from the, the other shape. Here probably I'm gonna use bull tool, yeah. So bull tool is another add-on that um, comes with Blender. You just need to activate it. And uh, then I believe the shortcuts are, um, no, I'm, I'm sure the shortcuts are Control Shift B. So basically you choose the cutter, then the object that you want to cut in, and then Control Shift B and you choose whatever you want. You can do this with hard ops too. Um, I, I recently found out I wasn't using it, this feature. Uh, those faces look darker because they had the uh, inverted normals. That's what happens when you scale uh, on a negative. Uh, so if you scale more than uh, zero and you go like minus one to flip the object, um, the normals are gonna flip too. So in order to correct them, just select all the geometry with A uh, while you are in sub-object mode and you enter in subject object mode with tab. So you select all the faces and then um, control N to recalculate the normals. Here I'm doing the same trick where uh, I rotate the stuff to see where I need to cut stuff. And then I create a, a shape that I Boolean out of the other shape. Probably could have done a much more elegant cut here, I, I don't think I would have need to fix that, but yeah, I, I used again unfuck tool too. And see now when that rotates, fits in there. Cloning this uh, hook base. I don't know how to call it, so so I parented the, again on the joint. So whenever the joint moves. It's going to move itself too. Here I was adding these parts. Uh, they kind of suggest more um, like structure I guess here I realized that mirror wasn't well done so I redid it uh, all these techniques I probably stole from uh, Vitaly Bulgarov and uh, Tor Freak Tor Freak does uh, his modeling in Modo I watched almost all his streams. Uh, you, you can find a lot of uh, videos from him on YouTube because he streams a lot. So I, I try to mimic what I see these guys do because they're really good professionals. They're really fast and efficient. They design straight up gangster style. No question asked. They just do it. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And yeah, Vitaly too. I, I think you all guys know Vitaly. He's the Papa Hard Surface of the community. And if you don't know him, uh, just Google Vitaly Bulgarov and Tie your jaw to the face so it doesn't drop too low. <laughs> okay, so here I'm uh, adding that detail that uh, I added on the shoulder guards. I'm edit adding it down here and then I'm gonna mirror it and then I'm gonna edit everywhere. Kind of reminds me of those things that you step on, so, and it, so you don't need to slip, like in uh, 
engineering environments. So that's why I kept it on because it kind of has a, a narrative. Maybe when the guy that drives the mech climbs, he can step on those as a base point. Again, here I'm cloning with uh, Shift D and then I activated the surface snapping with Shift Tab and Control Shift Tab, tab to set space on. And also if uh, you find that the geometry doesn't stick right, you might need to click on this icon here that's a, like a circle with, now it disappeared, but it was here just, see, this one uh, at the bottom. Uh, so that icon aligns uh, your object with the normals of the overlay, uh, underlaying geometry. So here I brought back the concept for some reason. Oh yeah, I wanted to make the, those cuts. So I used the box cutter because I wanted to make that uh, shape accurate, I guess. I don't know how accurate based on the concept, but again, I'm not trying to mimic the concept 100%. It's more there as a guide. And then I'm gonna just play with this stuff. Make it look right in 3D. Because in 2D, like I said, doesn't really matter. So this is a proper cylinder that you should add if you, maybe even higher detail. Like I think this one, I, I set 100 uh, spans on it, but I think you can go even higher, like 150 or so. And when you're gonna voxelize this, it's gonna be like super nice. And later on, like with the whole mech selected, uh, I merged everything together and uh, I realized you can voxelize that shit too. So I don't know currently what's the limit, but basically I had around 10 million uh, uh, vertices or faces. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, you, you're going to wait for two or three minutes, but then it's like you have the whole mesh into a single mesh. It's like Dyna mesh. So it's pretty cool. And the speed is like not bad. Like I think, yeah, it's a bit slower than DynaMesh, but it works. So here I'm trying to mimic Vitaly Bulgarov and uh, the Moi workflow that he uses, where he kind of draws with a 